video showing you how to download Lightburn and how to use it for the first time. So in class we would have already have clicked on this link if you were there. It would have taken you to this website which isn't loading properly and you would have downloaded the correct version. Let's, let's see if I can get this to work. Let's change wi -Fi's. It's not going to work. Okay, hopefully you've already downloaded that. But there'd be a download trial button on the page at the top and right down the bottom of the page, when it loads properly, there are versions for you to download. So if you have an Apple, you download the Mac version. If you have a Windows, it's one of these two. One's a 64-bit, one's a 32-bit. How do you know which one? You go to your About section in your computer. So you go to your search bar, type in About. You have information there about your PC. Click it. And it will tell you here in system type 64-bit operating system or 32. So I download the 64-bit version. I download that one. Now, once you download it, Lightburn will open up like this and there'll be a big window here asking you for a license key, something like this. But you'll have it blank here. Now the license key is on Moodle. So straight underneath it, here's the license key. So you copy that, you paste it in this box, and there should be a button here that says activate license. You click activate license. Now for people on Macs, for some reason, you have to put that in every time you open Lightburn. People on PCs, you put it in once and it's locked in. All right, so once you hit activate, it'll close and it should prompt you with what sort of device we have. We have the Emblazer 2. So it should pop up here, you click Emblazer 2, and then you click through all the buttons. It'll say next, 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 okay. I don't know how many there are, but just keep clicking next, and it will load. Now, if it doesn't, you can go down to here, devices, and you can go import, or you can go create manually, and there it is. Core 2, next, 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 oops, finish, and then you're done. I'm not gonna do it because I've already got it in there, okay? What that does is it sets this workspace to the size of our laser cutter, which is 500 mil long, which is half a meter, by 300 mil wide, okay, 30 centimeters. That's the space we've got to work in. Now, you guys are only gonna be creating a very small beanie tag. What's a beanie tag? Well, let's have a look at it. Google Images, beanie, tag, enter, there you go, Oop, little tags. Now I'll click into images and you'll see they're all different sizes. So last semester's group did like a little leather tag like this. I always think we could do even something even smaller, just less obvious, but still includes a little skill there. It's up to you. Now, if you're gonna do a tag like this, your maximum size is 40 millimeters wide, four centimeters by three centimeters high. Okay, you need to remember that, maybe write it down, 40 by 30. If you want a little tag like this, I'm thinking something like 40 mil by 10 mil, and you can simply put a word on it or a tiny little logo. Same with these, 10 mil wide, 40 mil long. But you can just do it the same as this, and we just, when we cut it, we stitch it on by hand the other way, all right? You have to decide what you want. So, in Lightburn, the first thing we'll do is that size. So I'm gonna draw both. So the big tag, you just click and drag a rectangle, and then up here, you unclick your padlock, so it's unlocked, and you can type in 40, and then click into the height and go 30, and click enter on your keyboard. Okay, click your select tool. You can click outside it. That's the space you've got to design in. If you're doing the smaller one, you can draw another one, come up here, make sure it's unlocked, and we said 40 by 10, and that's in millimetres. And that's the size you'd have to design in. It doesn't matter which one you choose, it's the same skill. You won't get more marks for doing something bigger or something smaller, okay? It's about the skill that you put into it. Now, the next thing you have to think about is how you're gonna attach it to your beanie. So you might decide, I'm gonna put little holes in the corners so that I can just stitch it on with a bit of wool. That's fine. Put the size in of four mil 
by four mil. And the other thing you can do is copy paste. So I've got that selected. Control C is copy, Control V, wherever your mouse goes, it pastes it there. Control V, Control V, click off it. And you can just zoom in and you can grab that middle square and you can move it around a bit if you want it a bit further away from where it landed. I'm just zooming in using a two finger pinch on my, my um, trackpad. Yeah, it looks all right. So you could do that. Now, what do the colors mean? It just means that's a layer type. So that's blue there, that's blue there. It does not burn that color. Think about when you burn something, like you burn a bit of paper, the edge just goes a black or a brown. It just depends on how much heat is in it and how fast you're moving. Same with the laser. It's only gonna burn a black or a brown depending on how fast it's moving, the speed. So that's four millimeters per second and how much power, PWR, you put into the laser, so that's a full power. Okay, so I'll manipulate those settings for you. I just need you to do things in different colors. So I'm gonna click one, hold shift on the keyboard, click the others to select them all at the same time. I'm gonna come down the bottom here and click a different color and look at that, there's a new layer. So you just have to put them on different layers. I will go in and set your speed and power settings. You don't have to worry about that. Um, you might decide on a different way of attaching it, that's fine. You might want to just go the needle and thread and do it by hand. And then you don't have to put those little holes in, okay? It'll just be fabric, so it will be soft enough to just pierce it with a needle. The next thing you can do is put pictures in here and words. So words is the next easiest thing, so down in your drawing tools there's an A create or edit text. You click it, then you just click where you want to put your text. So you might just want to put your initials in there, click the select tool, and you can put it where it needs to go. Too big. So just like clip up, click and make it smaller. All right, now what's this going to look like when I put on the laser? If you click Alt P on your keyboard, it gives you a print preview. Looks like that. And I think, oh, actually, I wanted my letters colored in. Okay, well, click on it and we're gonna put it on a different layer so that I can tell this layer, instead of just doing a line, do a fill and line, okay? I'm gonna turn the output on so I can see it in my print preview. Alt P on the keyboard, look at that, Color it in. If you zoom in, you can see how close they're spaced together. If you want them even closer, well, this is where more skill comes in, more marks. Um, we want our line interval, which is how far they are apart, to be closer. So at the moment, there's one line every half millimeter. So two per mil. I want about 10. There you go, 0 0.1. Click OK. Click Alt P. Whoa. And if you zoom right in, you can see how much closer they are together. In all honesty, guys, I probably wouldn't go any closer than. Oops, click OK. I wouldn't go any closer than about 0.3. If you think three lines per millimetre, that's pretty close. If you think about how big a millimetre is and you're going to fit three lines in there. Oh, P. See, it still looks really good. Just a little bit further apart. And that whole design will take five minutes 49. So I put that back at the 0.1. So there's 10 every mil. Watch that time blow out. See, 15 minutes, way too long for a little beanie tag. Okay. Change it to 0.4, it's even faster. Okay, four minutes 40. Now, if you don't want your initials on there or you just want those small and you want a little image on there, I might even just throw that on there. If you just want an image on here, well, we can do that too. So you have to have the image that you want so and as an outline. So I might put a dog head outline image. And you pick the one you like. Oh, I like that one. That looks cool. Save image as. 
just going to throw it in my pictures folder as number one dog so I can find it fast. Okay, and back in Lightburn, you can go File, Import. And I'm going to go to my pictures folder where I saved it. Number one. I thought I would be able to find it fast. Again, got all supported image files. Maybe it wasn't a supported image type. Maybe I put it somewhere else. Let's go again. Save image as a uh, different file type. Okay. So the way around that, we can new. It's got a little bit of dirt here on it, doesn't matter. File, save as one dog. It won't matter that it's the same, so it's a different file type. Back in Lightburn, file, import. Images, whoops, pictures, sorry. There he is, as a JPEG, click open. It's still too big, that's okay. We're going to make him smaller to fit. Okay, now I'm going to go to Tools and Trace Image. Now you'll see here it puts this pink or purple line around the image. Now it might not be as clean as you want. So you can slide these bars and you'll get more or less detail. Okay. And you might actually like some of the looks you get with it. Okay. And once you're happy with it, you click OK. It has traced it. I'm going to zoom right in. And I'm just going to clearly click on the background of the original image we put in and click Delete on my keyboard. And it leaves the outline of the dog. Now, these little tiny bits are attached to it. How do you detach them? Well, select the whole thing like that. And up here, you've got a silhouette of a person. I'm going to click it to ungroup the selection. Click off it. And when I click back on it, I can get these small little bits and click delete on the keyboard. And look at that. I've cleaned that up and I've shown even more skill. Okay. Now, if I go Alt P, there's what I've got as my image. Yeah, you can get creative with this. You might go, well, I only want the, I only want the nose coloured in. Well, you can do that because we've already ungrouped it. So you could select just the nose, put it on a different layer. You can tell that layer to do just a line, and you can come back to this layer, your green layer, and you can tell your green layer just a line. Thanks. P. Whoops. Okay, now see how the nose didn't come up? It's because my output is off. And, okay. That's line. Fill in line. Try again. There you go. It does exactly what you tell it to do. So, guys, you can re watch this video. And in Lightburn, I want you to start designing your beanie tags Then make sure you go File, Save As. You need to save it in your tech folder or on your desktop somewhere you can find it. Whoopsie. Oh. Okay, hopefully that's helped you.